welcome to ECTV. For me, it's a pleasure to present uh, Professor Helmut Baumgartner, and we are going to speak about aortic stenosis evaluation. So we go for the first question. Which is the most important measurement in aortic evaluation, area or gradient? Well, this is a good question, and there are different points of view. Of view. Um, from a pathophysiologic point of view, area has, of course, the advantage to be less flow-dependent, and is the better parameter compared to gradient. There's also the prognostic view. There are a lot of data now that show us that the valve area is very important prognostically. On the other hand, from a technical and from a practical point of view, gradient as long as is uh, performed and measured by somebody who has really the skills and does it carefully is the much more robust uh, parameter and wealth area has the problem that we have to combine several measurements we add on uh, the, the errors so we have a much weaker from a technical uh, point of view much much weaker measurement mm -hmm. and on the other hand we need to be very precise because pathophysiologically it means a lot if you have a change in uh, a few a tenth of a centimeter square so we end up that we need to use actually an integrated approach and mm -hmm. look at both gradient wealth area flow Etc. And the last question, what is your personal view about the entity of low flow, low gradient aortic stenosis? Well, I think this is uh, certainly the most uh, challenging uh, situation and uh, the combination of a low gradient, actually we, we now better talk about low gradient aortic stenosis and mean that we calculate a valve area of 0.0 or less and from valve area would say this is severe stenosis but we only have a low gradient. and. This is an entity we have been knowing for years. If this is in a patient with low flow and poor left ventricular function, so this is the classical low flow, low gradient, with reduced left ventricular ejection fraction where the putamine echo can be helpful to distinguish between pseudo-severe and too severe. So this is very well accepted. And then the much more uh, difficult issue is that we now know that we may have a low flow situation even with normal ejection fraction. So this would be low flow, low gradient with preserved ejection fraction. This is already difficult. Now in the recent uh, two years or so, there was even proposed that we may have normal flow, low gradient uh, aortic stenosis, and this may mean that the patient requires treatment. Now I think for, the, for this entity, low gradient, normal flow, I, I would say, and if you look carefully at the data, this is mostly miscalculation, and these patients actually do not have severe stenosis. Mm -hmm. uh, the important uh, group is the ones with low gradient, low flow, and normal ejection fraction. And in this group, um, I'm, I'm also convinced that uh, the disease exists, although if you look at the data, it's not that convincing, because it mainly is based on retrospective data where mm -hmm. patients were compared whether they had surgery or no surgery but we have no real uh, prospective comparison. So this means uh, that uh, in this situation, most of the patients may have uh, confounding factors that are now not accounted, even if there's an adjustment, statistical adjustment, mm -hmm. because the typical population where this is likely that the patients may have um, severe stenosis are the elderly. M most of them have mm -hmm. hypertension. Um, and uh, this is the typical group where you then have to look very carefully. Mm -hmm. And I think the problem is that even in these patients, we need to distinguish between pseudo-severe and severe. And it is still uncertain whether the putamine can help in this situation. Mm -hmm. And I think to look at the degree of calcification is probably right now one of the most uh, helpful things and mm -hmm. by CT measuring the uh, calcium load can then be the clue to decide mm -hmm. whether this is really severe or not. Th thank you for your answer. You're welcome.